Welcome. Let me say something more about the partition function P n, which Euler already looked at in the mid 18th century. And Euler got uh, immediately after he had been asked about this in 1740, he came up with a nice recursion. And this is called the pentagonal number theorem. It's a recursion which allows you to compute the partition function very quickly. So if you know uh, smaller for smaller n the partition number then you can get it like that. So pn is pn minus 1 plus pn minus 2 minus pn minus 5 minus pn minus 7. So there is always plus plus minus minus plus plus. And uh, what is hidden there are the pentagonal numbers. The pentagonal numbers have been known since antiquity like, uh, uh, you know, this picture, the Babylonian sundial picture, features these uh, numbers. They satisfy a nice linear recursion, and uh, so there's an explicit formula, and for k positive or negative, you can kind of get two branches. And uh, what happens is, if you rewrite this, and Euler already did that, you write this uh, for that uh, product. So Euler was a master in calculus already. He had this recursion, which is a pretty cool recursion, right? If you take 1 minus z times 1 minus z squared times 1 minus c cubed times 1 minus c to the fourth, etc. And then you look at the Taylor series of that, then the, the coefficients are only plus or minus 1, and they exactly occur on the pentagonal numbers. And related to that is the, when you take the reciprocal, I mean, you divide this by one, one by that, this gives you this, and then this reveals the, the partition numbers. So this is the generating function of the partition numbers, something which, which is very, uh, a very nice product and uh, has relations with modular forms, etc. So there are many, many different places where this product appears. And maybe I say something about how I got later do that with work with Lesier and Stangerman when you are looking at problems in dynamical systems like these Birkhoff sums. You add up random variables which are not independent but almost periodic and then you get interesting things, you get interesting Dirichlet series, you get the interesting Taylor series and you get interesting products especially for the golden mean. There were some really nice structures right there. But maybe I focus on the pentagonal number theorem, which I discovered as a high school student. Just that what, what happened is essentially this is what I wrote down is what, what I got. And uh, you find that on page 84 of my, you know, big opus, <laughs> additive Zahlen theory, anschauliche additive Zahlen theory, and pretty naive approach. But it's actually pretty neat and I could not summarize, I mean, what happens is you just write down the partitions uh, like that. You, these are all the partitions of the number eight. So there are 22 partitions of the number eight. And then what I was looking at is, look at all the partitions where one is the smallest number. I call this uh, P1 underline one. That's kind of the notation I used already then. And uh, in this case, if the one appears here, with the underline means appears as the smallest number. So if I look at this, all these partitions, I look at the, the partitions where one is the smallest one. So I have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And if I take them away and I just look at the, you know, partition complex I have without that, I ignore everything which just doesn't have one, 
and then I get the partitions, all the partitions of seven. That's what we have here. So that's actually just all the partitions which contain one. There is no distinct, you know, with one, there is no smaller element than one. So you have just P n minus one. So that's one of the things. Now we start counting the partitions where two is the smallest one. So let's just so see where this is. This is here, 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 here. So there are one, two, three, four. There are four of them. Now, if I count them, what I can do, I count them and say, okay, these are all the ones where two appears, right? But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are eleven where two appears, but actually count some where two is not the smallest. And there are actually seven of them where two is not the smallest. One, two, three, four, five, no, uh, one, one, two, three, four, four, five, five, right. So where, where does two not, where is two not the smallest? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there are seven, right? And so we have uh, 11 minus seven, there are four. So that's the next thing I counted. And then I counted all the ones where three is the smallest number. So how many are there where three is the smallest number? You see there's only one. Three is the smallest number. This is all the ones where three appears. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven. So this is where three appears. This is where I have to subtract where three and one appears before or two appears before. This I have to subtract. But then I have to double count it here, the one and two. So I have to add them again. And so on. when I do that, I get just one. That's the one where three is the first. And so on, I do that with four. So four, how many are there where four is the first? There's only one, but we can count them by counting all of them where four appears. One, two, three, four, five. There are five of them where four appears. And now we have to subtract where one appears before four, two appears before four, three appears before four, and then double count it, we add where one and two and one and three, so on, appears. And we go through the whole thing, and uh, in the end there is just P8, you know, there is just one partition where eight is the first, and that's actually the only partition where eight is first. And uh, so if I add this all up, what I notice when I add this all up, I get these pentagonal numbers. So uh, actually that's what I wanted to say today. Maybe something uh, remarkable also about the divisor function. Divisor function satisfies the same recursion. <laughs> it's kind of puzzling. Uh, it satisfies the first recursion that Euler, also Euler figured out in 1753. And we have seen last time there is a connection between the divisor function and uh, the partition function. So uh, this is actually funny that it satisfies the same recursion, but uh, first of all, the initial condition are different. And also here, when you take P of zero, you count it as one. Here in this recursion, when, when you hit sigma of zero, you count it as N. So it's not the real, you know, the same recursion here. Otherwise you would, you would get, get similar numbers. Right? In this case, you get these numbers behave completely differently. Then this this is monotonally increasing. This doesn't mon is not monotonally increasing. So for primes, for example, if n is a prime, we have p plus one. An interesting connection, and uh, maybe I talk another time about this exciting story from dynamical system theory, which uh, I've also used once. The, this dynamical system theory to show that p n to the power one over n converges to one, something one knows also from the theory of partition. But maybe that another time, that's it.